Hail, hail the first of May, oh, for it is the first summer's day, oh. Cast your cares and fears away, and drink to the oss on the first of May. All around Europe, the 1st of May is an important festival. Nowadays it's associated with communism, of course, but that's only a recent uh, addition to the May Day celebrations. It was originally a pagan celebration, and you're probably familiar with many of the iterations of it because they're so uh, ubiquitous and well-known. Perhaps the British Isles has the most famous of all, and um, I include... England, Ireland and Scotland in the cultures that still celebrate May Day in a very pagan fashion to this day with an unbroken tradition leading back to pre-Christian times. But we can see very similar kinds of practices in other cultures so it can't be attributed merely to Celtic people or to Germanic people. This is something older. It's something that comes from the very roots of Indo-European paganism. Um, I'll start with England. We elect a May Queen, a beautiful girl from the village, is adorned with garlands and flowers, and she was she used to be paraded around as the as the May Queen. She was essentially a stand-in for a goddess, and the most likely goddess that she was standing in for was Esther, which was the goddess uh, of the dawn, and it's from her that we take the modern name Easter. Uh, in fact, the Another thing we did, in some, instead of actually choosing a May Queen from the local girls, sometimes we'd use, in some villages, just a statue of the Virgin Mary uh, in Christian times. And uh, Mary became the May Queen, and she was her image was paraded around uh, ju- w- with flowers, just as uh, the image of a goddess had previously been done in pagan times. Esther is attested by Bede, the Venerable Bede, an, an Anglo-Saxon monk, who says of her that she was uh, celebrated for an entire month, that's April, which and the previous month of March was uh, dedicated to a different deity, and that uh, during this month all kinds of uh, celebrations happened, but that this, this celebrations had been replaced by what we now think of as Easter, that is the, the uh, Christian celebration. The folklorist Jacob Grimm in the 19th century collected stories from peasants around Germany about uh, a similar thing of uh, and a similar deity called Ostara and he explained through doing this many of the pagan-like associations we have with Easter um, and also he attested the talk of an Ostara month um, in April from uh, with, with, with very much like Bede and uh, obviously the word the names Ostara and Estra are cognates so this is the West Germanic uh, source of this celebration. Grimm writes Ostara, Estra, seems therefore to have been the divinity of the radiant dawn, of upspringing light, a spectacle that brings joy and blessing, whose meaning could be easily adapted by the resurrection day of the Christian gods. Bonfires were lighted at Easter, and according to popular belief of long standing, the moment the sun rises on Easter Sunday morning, he gives three joyful leaps, he dances for joy. Water drawn on the Easter morning is, like that at Christmas, holy and healing. Here also, heathen notions seem to have grasped themselves on great Christian festivals. Maidens clothed in white, who at Easter, at the season of returning spring, show themselves in clefts of the rocks and on mountains, are suggestive of the ancient goddesses. Uh, This is talking about Easter, and you can say, why are you talking about Easter on May Day? Well, actually, as I said, all of April was Easter month, and the the idea of Easter Sunday is the Christian uh, innovation that well, that comes from Christianity. There was no Easter Sunday in pagan times. The entire month had different kinds of festivals associated with Easter. And the final and most important part of April was the last night of April. That's the the night uh, before May Day. So May Day itself wasn't actually a holy day in pagan times. Nowadays, the celebrations of May Day either are on the day of May or on the day, on the night before. Here in Sweden, they have Valbori, they celebrate the night before. But all of these derive from the celebrations that happened on the, fi- on the dawn of uh, the first dawn of May, which is the first day of summer, uh, and that's the end of Easter month. So dawn, of course, Easter being the goddess of the dawn, you can see the obvious associations that must have been with this, uh, that Easter must have been the goddess that was worshipped at this festival. 
and uh, I'll explain through other uh, folkloric sources how we can be sure that's the case. I'll go through some other celebrations, non-Germanic ones as well. I mean, today in um, Romania, they have very similar customs to us, or they used to, at least until recently. So on the eve of May 1st, the young people go into the woods, bringing back green branches that they put uh, in front of the doors uh, of houses on the eve of what they call Armindeni. And uh, this means the uh, Armindeni is uh, a maypole. So they have a maypole just like we have in England. And in, if for those of you who don't know, in England, on the 1st of May, we, have a, a, we erect a pole and there are ribbons coming off of it. The spirit of Merry England still lives. And the uh, young girls in England, it was traditionally virgin girls, maidens, would dance around that. And obviously that has connotations of a fertility cult. Well, the same thing exists in Romania, which is not Germanic in any way. And whether the Romanians got it from Latin, pagan, Roman stuff or from Slavic, I'm not sure. Uh, they also, the young girls and boys, sang in the woods and brought poplar, ash, beech, oak or fir branches, which they put at the gates or in front of the house. In some areas, especially in Transylvania, a tree was brought which was left with some twigs, a cross or a wheel made of wheat spice or a coronet with flowers and placed in the middle of the village. Now that's exactly what we do in Maple. Take a big pole, it's adorned with flowers and it's put in the middle of the village for the dancing maypole dancing and here i live in sweden now they have exactly the same custom too but they don't do it at may day they do it at midsummer and the they erect a pole adorn it with flowers often with a cross a sun wheel a solar symbol and people dance around it nowadays in sweden it's not just girls or virgins who dance around it it's anyone but and similar that's moving that way in england and you can see that only happened recently in the la in the 20th century the boys get, start doing it too originally it was just girls and it was a fertility cult well that shows that there's a connection between the celebration of may day and the celebration of midsummer and of course in england we say may day is the first day of summer but that doesn't really hold true in sweden where it's a slightly different climate with further north so actually Perhaps that's the reason why many of the things we associate with May Day celebrations here in Sweden actually occur on Midsummer. And I can say there are other parallels around Europe where what is in one country celebrated on the 1st of May is in another country celebrated in the middle of summer. Another parallel between that Romanian and the English customs. In 1583, the Puritan Philip Stubbs recorded that all the girls used to go into the forest on the night of before the May, the night of the 30th of April. And uh, he was very against it because he said of all the girls who spent May Day Eve in the woods, scarcely the third part of them returned home again undefiled. So there was obviously some sexual stuff going on. They weren't just picking flowers. It should be noted that May, uh, May Day was banned by the Puritans. The, the Puritans really didn't like it at all. They also tried to ban Christmas. And Maypoles and things like that were seen as pagan in those times, in the 1500s. And that's because they were. They were correct in thinking that, and it shows the endurance of these pagan festivals in Christ, uh, Christian Europe for a long time. There are also re records of similar maypole customs in Germany, um, which shows the Germanic link of the maypole in England. We move towards the Celtic side of things. Ireland has Beltane. It's very much the same thing as May Day, but it's the Celtic equivalent. The Irish Beltane is celebrated traditionally, it's well attested that historically there were Beltane fires. They would like big, great fires. And that's exactly what they do here in Sweden for Valbori. Valbori is uh, the Swedish word for Valpurgis night. Uh, so it's the night before May Day. And it's celebrated much like in Germany, it what used to be anyway, but with fires. And, and it's associated with witches. In Germany, it's associated with witches, whereas Easter in Sweden is associated with witches, showing uh, some commonalities. You can see how the different festivals are kind of connected. There was something originally linking them, and then these customs were di uh, dispersed into different Christian festivals. Valpurgis and Valbori actually come from the name for a Christian Anglo-Saxon saint. She went to Germany to preach Christianity to the German heathens, and her name was given to a formerly pagan celebration to try and Christianize it. On Valbori night, I'll go to the great burial mounds, the pagan burial mounds at Gamla Uppsala, which was the site of one of the biggest pagan temples in Europe, probably at the time, a thousand years ago or so. 
and they still have a huge bonfire there every year and people sing and they drink and um, it's a very spiritual occasion actually although nowadays the priests from the local cathedral come and say Christian prayers there uh, perhaps they're highly conscious of how pagan this, this custom still is and they want to Christianize it and make sure it has some Christian connotations. Another custom that you find around Europe which is very interesting is the custom of the May Dew. So in Ireland, Scotland, Romania uh, and Lithuania there is a tradition of washing one's face or even one's body in the dew. Now the Lithuanians do this on the morning of Midsummer's Day. So after the celebrations of Rasos or Joininas, that's uh, the, the, the festival for St. John's Day, which is in midsummer. And then in the morning, it's mainly girls do it, and it's associated with preserving beauty. And the interesting for the other cultures, it's always done on May morning. And then, so we see again another instance of the same custom, but being divided into two different parts of the calendar. Uh, it's got to have an Indo-European origin, because Baltic... Slavic, Celtic, Germanic peoples doing it and in different ways in a folk custom. It's unlikely. Folk customs don't usually travel like this way across cultures so, so clearly. It, you must, it's much more likely to have an ancient origin. And it's clearly pagan, not Christian. And I would say that this is connected again to the goddess of the dawn because it's the morning dew. The dew forms on the grass and the herbs first thing in the morning. So they stay up all night. In England we have Morris dancing, a traditional form of dancing. There, there are certain parts of the country where they welcome in the May as the sun rises. They dance the sun to rise, to cause the sun to rise for the May at the end of Easter month. And that um, dance coincides with the forming of the dew. At this point, women can wash their face. And as has been noted in that Puritan text, the women may have also been up to some mischief in the forest. This festival was associated with female sexuality and it was always said in English customs that it's very bad luck for a man to marry on May Day because women's sexual power would be at such a great height that he would then have uh, less control over his marriage because the woman's sexual allure would be so strong that she would be able to control him more easily in their marriage. So uh, yeah, it was also a time in Britain in the British Isles, not just England, where women were encouraged to go and find husbands. And in Ireland, sexual, I'm talking about in Christian times, most of this stuff has been going, has not stopped until recently, uh, or sometimes it still goes on. But in Ireland, the sexual restraints and customs were relaxed on the eve of May Day. And girls would get up to some mischief, maybe go and try and find a young lad who they could marry or, or, uh, just to maybe do something that they shouldn't do until they were married. This um, washing of the dew happens in all these cultures too, so perhaps it's associated with purification. I don't know, but it's definitely associated with beauty, preserving beauty and female power over men. I think, again, it's connected to the goddess of the dawn. That's why there's this fe female association. And the variations of this custom are that whether men or women do it, because... Um, in most of the cultures I can see nowadays, it's still only women who wash their face in the dew, but some men and women do it. And whether it's done in May morning or in midsummer, as the Lithuanians do it in midsummer. And uh, another custom that varies from place to place in the sense of the dew custom is where they take it from. So sometimes it doesn't matter, you can take it from the grass. But it also seems that in some cases it's more special, the Jews more special if you take it from a certain place, like if it comes from wheat, but I don't know how much wheat is going to be growing at this time of year, or if it comes from, in the case of Edinburgh in Scotland, people traditionally go onto Arthur's Seat. It's a big hill next to the city, and if they take the dew from the mo uh, May morning there, then it's especially good luck for them. A source here, a great old source, describing from Gerard Boat in 1652, on the virtues of May Day dew. He says, The English women and gentlewomen in Ireland, as in England, did use in the beginning of the summer to gather good store of dew, to keep it by them all the year after, for several good uses of physic and otherwise. Their manner of collecting and keeping it was this. 
In the month of May especially, and also in part of the month of June, they would go forth betimes in the morning, and before, th- and before sun rising, into a green field, and there, either with their hands, strike off the dew from the tops of the herbs into a dish, or else, throwing clean linen clothes upon the ground, take off the dew from the herbs into them, and afterwards wring it out into dishes, and thus they continue their work until they have got a sufficient quantity of dew according to their intentions. That which is gotten from the grass will serve, but they choose rather to have it from the green corn, especially wheat, if they can have the convenience to do so, as being persuaded that this dew hath more virtues and is better for all purposes than that which has been collected from the grass or other herbs. The dew thus gathered they put in a glass bottle, and so set it in a place where it may have the, set, the warm sunshine all day long, keeping it there all the summer. After some days rest, some dregs and dirt will settle to the bottom. The which they perceive, they pour off all the clear dew into another vessel, and fling away those settings. The dew, thus thoroughly purified, looketh whitish, and keepeth good for a year or two after. So, in this sense, it seems that there's a tonic, not just for beauty, but for other kinds of medical purposes. You also see in that quote the, the clear uh, association that both Ireland and England have the same custom here. And in Ireland, Beltane, the celebration of May, is associated with a goddess, or the saint, Bridget, who was originally a goddess. And she's celebrated on that day with, they make little crosses out of corn, or straw crosses, even swastikas out of that, obviously solar symbols. Because Bridget is a dawn goddess. She's a goddess of the dawn, just like Easter. And it's interesting that the name uh, Bridget is derived from Proto-Celtic Briganti, which means the high one. And it's cognate with the Sanskrit name Brati. And that name is an epithet for the Hindu goddess of the dawn, Ushas. And there you can see clearly that there is an Indo-European origin, because it's even linking India and Ireland to a dawn goddess. Now, um, as I said, Iestra and Ostara are both names for the dawn goddess, and they come from Proto-Germanic Austro. And her name and, all, and the other names, such as Ushas, all derive from the Proto-Indo-European goddess name Hausos. He, she is the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European goddess of the dawn. April was called Aeston Monoth right up until the 12th century. And then we changed its name. And it was marked as a sacred month for us in pagan times. And even the Christians said so, that Aeston Monoth was a very sacred month for pagans. And um, they've tried to change this into a Christian thing by having Easter there. If you're not aware, the actual dating of the Christian Easter celebration was very much contested during the uh, uh, Middle Ages, uh, the medieval times. And even today, the, um, the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church disagree on when Easter should be celebrated. Um, and its placement was um, strategic, perhaps, to absorb the existing pagan customs throughout that month. Uh, and the big celebration of May Day uh, was not replaced with a specific Christian festival, but rather has been trying, people have tried to Christianize it a bit with St. Bridget, etc., in different countries. Now, uh, I will be celebrating May Day in Valbori, or I'll drink all night and have a lot of fun, uh, and I'll try and stay awake until the dawn uh, so I can celebrate the rising of the sun and the coming in of May. And in England, Another lovely thing that we have, although we don't have massive celebrations like we're here in Uppsala, where thousands of people will be out in the streets drinking and celebrating, um, we do have these very quaint folk customs and lovely folk songs. And I'll just play a bit of one now for you. Uh, And I hope that you'll remember this song when you welcome in the May this year. And I wish you all a very happy May Day. Also, please like and subscribe. Become a patron if you can afford to. And... If you know of any uh, May Day celebrations from your countries in Europe that I've missed out, please inform me of them and type them in the comments. Thanks for watching.